Hi everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you're a returning viewer or subscriber. In today's video, I'm going to be filming my October TBR. Super exciting because I've absolutely stacked this video full of autumnal reads like spooky season, dark academia, thrillery, light horror books, which is really just, you know, what this month is for. So I'm thrilled to share with you my ridiculously overambitious TBR for the month. I know for a fact that it would be an absolute miracle if I managed to get to all these books, but this is just, you know, I meant to film an October TBR without gathering pretty much every single book that is mildly appropriate for the season and showing it to you. So you can take this as like a little kind of Rex video without me actually having read them. You know, these are the books that are out there that are appropriate for the season that I own on my shelves. Yeah, let's just get into the video. So first book is very, very high priority TBR. It's a book I've owned since 2019 and I've actually decided to buddy read it this. I forgot my rings. One second. Good. I've actually decided to buddy read this. We actually planned to do the buddy read in September, but we didn't get right to it. So I feel like October, you know, it has to happen. This is Ninth House by Lee Buds Go. Beautiful Waterstones exclusive edition with an amazing colour. Putting this off for so long. This follows, what's her name? Alex Stern. I think her full name is Galaxy actually, which is crazy. But she is a freshman at Yale and she is kind of taken on by the college to oversee their secret societies so this book does have magic in it it's very dark academia obviously because of the whole yale setting and spooky vibes and the reason why they choose alex is because she has the ability to see greys which are essentially like the ghosts within this world so that is ninth house it has a sequel that's already out so i can jump into that straight after if i'm really keen this has to happen like i've owned it for so many years it's just ridiculous i haven't got to it yet and i'm sure it's gonna be great so that's the first book that is fingers crossed 100 happening if this doesn't happen um something will have gone wrong next up another book that i mentioned on my autumn tbr video so i did a video where like i talked about the autumn season like the three months within it and i was like these books i'd love to read within it so this video does have a few of those but it also has some other books that are not entirely related to that one and just ones that are either appropriate for the season or ones i've been meaning to get to for a long time this book however was in that video and that is the baron gray by christine lynn herman christine lynn herman i bought this in the charity shop and I bought it because one, it had pink spray edges, and two, it was signed by the author. So I was like, even if I don't enjoy this, I can just sell it, you know? But this, I believe, has kind of Stranger Things vibes, which is a show that I didn't actually love. Like, I only watched a couple of episodes and I was just not into it. But I want to give this a go. It's in rural New York, follows a bunch of teenagers as they kind of like figure out the mystery of this strange creature. Bodies are appearing in the woods, people are disappearing, and everything like that. If I'm going to read it at all, it's perfect for the season. And we will see. Oh my gosh. Christina Henry did like a little blurb on this book. It says, buried secrets and creepy atmosphere galore. Don't miss this stunning haunted tale. It's October in a book. I have Ico Villains by M.R. Rio. This is a book that I wouldn't be mad if I didn't get to it till November, but I do want to read it within this season because again, I've had this on my TBR for a couple of years now. Maybe I bought it last year. I can't remember. Either way, I would really like to get to it, obviously, which is why I'm mentioning it here. This is another dark academia kind of book, which is very beloved within that kind of like community of readers. We're following Oliver Marks. He's just served 10 years for a murder he may or may not have committed. And I think we go back in time and we explore like what actually happened and try and figure out who actually did the murder or whether it was Oliver himself. This is just such a staple within this subgenre and I basically heard nothing but good things about it so I'm very excited for this one and I would love to get it to it in the October season to kind of like carry on with those kind of creepy dark academy vibes that September kind of marks the beginning of. The Last Place You Look is a straight up thriller. This is a book I don't know much about because I actually received this in a little kind of unboxing video that I did for A Box of Stories and they sent me like a bunch of mostly thriller books and this is one of them. This is the shortest thriller on my shelves. I thought it'd be good to kind of get a book off my TBR. See what I think. It's also blurred by Sophie Hanna, who's a really big kind of mystery thriller author. She says, utterly superb. Can't remember when I last read such an expertly written and perfectly constructed book. Pure reading pleasure. Right, can we see anything that this book is actually about? Sarah Cook disappeared 15 years ago. Hopefully if I'm not remembering incorrectly. Her boyfriend, who's described as black and from the wrong side of the tracks, is committed of committed convicted of the murder and he's on death row so we have to kind of solve the mystery before he's killed i doubt that he will be to blame for it but yeah that's this book it sounds very intense not spooky just like full on scary i might not be able to handle this i'm not very good with like straight up kind of horror books well this is horror but like 
really scary books and especially if this reads kind of like a true crime story i know some people are really into that but that's not my thing i am apprehensive but we'll see how it goes it's very very short it's only like just over 300 pages and it could be fun if i really want to like commit to the spooky season this book is not at all related to october but it's the final book in a series i really want to finish off and that is finale by stephanie garber this book is the third book in the caraval series and after the caraval series there's the series called once upon a broken heart which features some of the characters within this and also just like set in the same kind of universe it's the first of a trilogy and the third book in that comes out this month so i feel like with the hype of that i'm going to be wanting to pick this book up so that i can get to the next trilogy the other thing is that this is a really stupid reason but like it's orange and pumpkins orange leaves you know the vibe the only thing is that these books take me a long time to get through and this is the longest in the series so i feel like this could eat out the majority of my month but again i wouldn't be mad if i started reading this in october and then i didn't finish it until november but we'll see what we do that's finale caravel follows two sisters as they get kind of caught up in this game the whole idea of caravel is like kind of carnival circus thing is that you're meant to remember that it's only a game but actually things kind of cross over into real life there is actually a greater risk of being injured whether that's kind of mentally or physically through the game it's a ya fantasy series very whimsical magical and i've had a lot of fun with it i've given both the first two books four stars excited to see how i find this final book in the series maybe i will love it even more truly devious is another book that was on my autumn tbr this book has been on my physical tbr my bookshelves for many years i think again since 2019 that's too long so we really do need to get to it this book follows a girl who is at Allingham Academy in Vermont. There's some mystery happens in the present and while she's solving that she actually finds that it's linking back to one in the past which happened on the same kind of plot of land in 1936. I believe that's right. I mean I could be completely wrong. But yeah she loves true crime or maybe it's that she's solving this cold case in the 1930s and then as she's doing that like it starts tying in with her life. I don't know. Either way fun time set in a beautiful area of America. Definitely fits the dark academia vibes. There's even like ivy on this cover. This is also the first book in the series. So I'll see how I find it in case I want to pick up the other books, but for now, this could be a fun one. It is quite chunky, but it is YA. I feel like I could get through it very quickly if I just kind of sat down and tried to. This is another book that's not at all boogie season related, but I've put this off for so many months. This is another book that's very, very high TBR. Ninth House and this book are just the ones I need to get to, and that's Ricochet by Kristen Becker Ritchie. I'm filming one book focused reading vlogs for each of the books in the Addicted series. So far, I've only done the one for the first book, and this is the second book, so it has to happen. It's a contemporary romance book as well, so I feel like it might break up some of the other books I'm gravitating towards, and it might just be like a light, quick read that I kind of put in between a couple of the big, thicker, heavier, like darker books. So this series follows Lily and Lowe. They both struggle with addictions. They have different addictions from each other. Lily is addicted to sex and Lowe is addicted to alcohol. They are in like a fake dating relationship in order to kind of enable each other, but that crosses over into something more. It's about their kind of healing journey, so they're opening up to their friends and their family and things like that, but also about the relationship between the two of them. I believe this book focuses more on Lily, who is my preferred member of the couple, and it's kind of like her branching out into addressing her addiction. So I think this could be a little bit heavy, but again, it's super short. It also is just like a new adult contemporary romance book. I feel like it can't be too bad. Either way, a vlog will be coming for this in October. Mark my words. I'm saying this now because I'm like holding myself accountable. Yesterday I went to the bookstore and my brother very kindly bought me a gift using a gift card that he had and he bought me Dracula by Bram Stoker. But this beautiful, beautiful edition of it. This is one of the Penguin Classics Deluxe Editions with this incredible cover, beautiful end papers, not end papers, like French flap and then Death with Edges. Everything is just wonderful about this book. I started Dracula in September on audiobook. I might talk a little bit about my experience reading that book, my September wrap up, but I'm only how much? 7% of the way through, so I've really only read like three or four chapters. But I've been wanting to pick up the physical book, so when I kind of walked into the bookstore and I could choose anything from there, I was like, why don't I just choose Dracula? So this is one that I may or may not get to this month. I would like to. I'm not sure whether I'm going to continue listening to the audiobook. I kind of like the idea of being able to annotate a physical copy. We will see what I do. So far, I'm really enjoying the read. It's very, very atmospheric, and the narrator does these amazing accents for the characters. Dark, but it's not really scary. It's just kind of like, I don't know, it's perfect for the season. Dramatic and setting this amazing landscape and things like that. This is definitely a book that I could pick up. Whether I will get to it or finish it is like a different thing but yeah that's a book that is potentially on my radar and then the final book we have is the thickest one and the one that i am kind of the most apprehensive about whether i'll get to out of all these that i've mentioned and that is because a it's just so big and b i just have to be in the right mood to read this otherwise i feel like it's going to be an awful experience and that is midnight sun by stephanie mayer this is a book that was also on my awesome tbr so i would love to get to it this season i'm not fussed about whether i read this in october or november i feel like november is like peak twilight season for me but again this follows vampires because this is literally just the first book of twilight but from edward's perspective you know it suits 
October spooky season, Halloween, all the vibes are perfect for that. But look at this guy, he's a brick. I don't know what to do. How many pages is this? Over 700. I'm tempted to like listen to the audiobook. I feel like that could be fun. Should we do that? I don't know. I do want to get this off my TBR though, because I feel like I can't read it really any other time of year except for that random moment in summer when I suddenly get re obsessed with Twilight. But yeah, maybe I'll kind of watch the film to get myself in the vibe. This is purely like dependent on mood reading. We'll see if I get to it. I will keep you updated, of course, on all of these reads. So there you go, there you have it. Those are the one, two, three, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why am I counting my fingers? I'm making this more confusing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books. Why is there no 10? Maybe nine's like a spookier number, I don't know, that I want to read in October. I also want to finish a couple of books I'm in the middle of, I'm in the middle of Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge, either or by Leif Batterman. Um, what else were you in the middle of? My Rock and Roll Friend by Tracy Thorne, Despair by Vladimir Nabokov. That's one of I've put on pause, but I love it. I'm just like stopping myself from reading it because I'm filming it for a video and I haven't filmed the clips yet. If I'm being sensible this month, I should read Ninth House, I should read Ricochet, and I should read Despair, and then the others can just like arrive after i've got through all those but we'll see what i do we'll see if i just kind of throw caution to the wind and pick up whatever the heck i want to thank you so much for watching this video thank you so much for being here i really do appreciate you so much i'll see you super soon for another video in a couple of days which i think will be my september wrap up i think if not it's another video that i am filming at the moment it's a vlog style video that's in the works that's very exciting i'm having a lot of fun kind of making that and i think i'm going to go and film a clip for it after this video if you enjoyed the video please make sure to give it a thumbs up because that's how i can tell that you did and i'll see you super soon but other than that i will leave you be catch up with you later bye bye